My name is Raymond J. McGuire, Harvard College, A.B., English and American Literature, Harvard Law School, Juris Doctor, Harvard Business School, Masters of Business Administration, currently Vice Chairman, Citigroup. I am so excited to be here. President Bacow, most distinguished Professor Gates, and preeminent businessman and exemplary philanthropist Hutchins. Only you could convene such a gathering and such a hallowed hall in which I grew up. When I get overwhelmed with feelings like this, I need to get help from one of the great philosophers of the 20th century, James Brown. I feel good. <laughs> Anyways, they, uh, they told me to restrict my comments to a few minutes, but in this room with all these folks, with all the material I have, and the person about whom I'm going to talk, I, I could get Pentecostal. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what that means, I could spend a couple of hours, but <laughs> I'm going to say like the preacher would say back home, I won't be long. It is, truly a, it is truly a privilege to be here amongst such an august group of honorees for such an essential gathering. You represent the power and influence which in today's environment we so desperately need. You stand tall on the modern day Mount Rushmore of civil rights. Thank you for carrying the torch. While I am honored and privileged to make this introduction, his standing and accomplishments need no introduction. This afternoon, I plead the Academy, give me leave and liberty to enter Robert Smith into the canon's pages so that those who are the stewards indelibly, indelibly inscribe him into history's pages please record his tenure as one of the most successful and influential in the 20th and 21st centuries in the global world of business, in the pantheon of philanthropy. And so how, how do I introduce a friend whose stature commands so much respect and admiration? It is like sharing the gift of a legend whom I've known since his early days. He is a titan amongst the giants. I could recite his biography, which is extraordinary, with innumerable distinctions. Included in that biography is the lessons of his parents, two noble educators who instilled in him a distinct curiosity and gifted mind that has earned him at least four patents, a chemical engineering degree from Cornell, and an MBA from Columbia Business School. In that biography, I could highlight what is implicit. Robert Smith lived by the time-tested code of race and equality that in order to be equal, you had to be the best. He mastered the skills of finance. He became an expert in the language of technology. He demonstrated again and again that he was the best. With his unassailable talent, with his will to win, with his vision of the world's future, he did what no one else has done in technology. He founded Vista Equity, a private equity firm focused on technology software, the now and future of technology. Robert Smith operates on the frontier. Vista has almost $60 billion of capital under management. He employs more than 60,000 people. In his venture, he is without peer. 
I'm reminded of what Ralph Ellison told us in that masterpiece that changed the shape of American literature, Invisible Man, play the game, but don't believe in it. Robert's addendum is until you can run it. <laughs> the day Robert Smith runs the game globally, and while he is celebrated because of his enormous successes, his legacy will be that Robert made billions and that Robert gave away billions. He has done well by himself, he has done well by others. His mother's example taught him to give back. And even though history will record him as philanthropic royalty, it will also record his higher purpose. It will show that Robert Smith is the answer to the ever-present question that we ask every kid from the neighborhood streets to the Park Avenue penthouses from kindergarten through graduate school. When you grow up, what do you want to be? In the list of responses, especially for black and brown girls and boys, they can now say, I want to be in technology. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be like Robert Smith. And down in Atlanta, Georgia, just a few months ago at Morehouse College, I can just imagine a young student, Tyrese Johnson, calling his grandfather right after graduation from Morehouse. And I imagine the call would go something like this. <laughs> Grandpa, Grandpa, we got it done. We got it done. We graduated from Morehouse. Today, I am a Morehouse man. Thank you, Grandpa. We wouldn't have made it here without you. And I know you wanted to be here, but you couldn't make it because of your health. But Mom and Grandma, they're here representing. They've been shouting. You haven't heard yet, probably, but at graduation, we heard uh, Mr. Robert Smith say that he was going to pay off all of our student debt. And Tyrese would go on and say, I, I, I didn't know anybody really had that kind of money. <laughs> Especially somebody who looked like me. He said, I could not believe that it was real. He said, I know, Grandpa, you, you taught me to never cry, but I couldn't hold back my tears. I know that y'all borrowed a lot of money to keep me here. I know that Mama worked two jobs and she kept going down to the credit union to take money out of savings. And I know it was hard, and my plan was to work every day so that I could pay it back and, and y'all wouldn't have to worry. But then Mr. Smith paid it all off. We don't have any more student debt. And none of my classmates and their families have any student debt. Morehouse taught us that we could fly. Mr. Smith taught us that we could soar <laughs> up there, up there with them eagles. And he would hear silence on the other end as his grandfather gathered himself. And then his grandfather said, son, our prayers have been answered. And all I can say is like the scripture says, and I believe it was from Psalms. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, 
nor their seed begging bread. When y'all get home, we gonna pray for Robert Smith. For his having changed lives and forever and profoundly transformed the global philanthropic and business landscape, the Hutchins Center presents Robert S. Smith, the W.E.B. Du Bois Medal. Well, what a beautiful introduction by Brother Ray, Brother Raymond J. McGuire. It's important to note there would be no Robert Smith if there wasn't a Raymond J. McGuire. I first learned of Ray in a magazine over 25 years ago. And growing up in Denver, Colorado, I didn't know people like Ray existed. I lived in a beautiful community of black people. Beautiful black mother, beautiful black father, who taught me the importance of community who taught me the importance of education, of excellence. I had a father who, on Sundays, sang opera in Italian <laughs> and in German <laughs> and spoke Latin to his friends. And a mother who graduated salutatorian at Dunbar High School in Washington, D.C. and was admitted to Radcliffe College. And a grandfather who admitted to me when I was going to college that he didn't have the money to send her to school. That carries with me every day. And so when I got into Cornell, I decided first, I'm gonna pick the hardest major that they have and I'm going to be the best at it. <laughs> and as I was a practicing chemical engineer, I read about Raymond J. McGuire, Harvard undergraduate, Harvard JD, Harvard MBA. I said, they don't make them any better than that. <laughs> And I decided it's time to go back to graduate school. I was living in New York, and I got into the JD MBA program at Columbia University. And a good friend of Raymond's, and now mine, introduced me to Ray. And they both changed my life. I was thinking of a career in consumer products and packaged goods. And they helped me understand the world of capital. They helped me understand this world of mergers and acquisitions. At the highest levels in the capital structure, board level discussions, CEOs making decisions, and they helped me understand that there were only one or two of them in those boardrooms. And that was the hardest thing to do. So I said, that's what I'm gonna go do. <laughs> and so I joined Goldman Sachs in the Mergers and Acquisitions Department. And I helped start what is our tech group today. And every day along the way, I thought about 
that beautiful community that I came from, of those people whose hopes and dreams are on shoulders like mine. I thought about the fact that I had a window of opportunity that opened for me. I was born at a time when they decided to desegregate the schools to create opportunity for African Americans to take part in the education of opportunities in this country. When they decided to affect forced busing to make that happen, some racists decided to burn one third of the buses. So only one bus came to my neighborhood. So rather than the entire neighborhood getting to go to a better school, only one bus load of us did. And when I look today, years back, at the kids who were on that bus versus the kids who were one block away who didn't get on that bus, there is a vast difference in education, in, their, in where they are economically, and how their kids are actually progressing. And I realize that part of my job is to create opportunity. And so when I put all of that together, and I think about what I have to do is I have to open that veil I have to get that light into our community and take all of that brilliance that is represented on this stage and all that brilliance that was represented in my neighborhood and ensure they had opportunity to go become the best that they can be so they can become Ray McGuire and Robert Smith. To me, that's my job. It is to liberate the human spirit. And I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate that I've had a chance to meet people along the way who have helped me, educated me, given me tools and skills and experiences and taken chances so that I can do that. I'm fortunate to be here at Harvard accepting this medal on behalf of my mother, who didn't get to attend Radcliffe. So Skip, thank you for that. And I know my mother loves you dearly. I love her too. And I want to thank you and the Hutchins Center and all that you all do to keep our spirit alive. <laughs>